The shores of glistening Huntington Beach, California, a water lover's paradise. But in this case... He wanted me stabbed multiple times, and he wanted me to hurt. The picture postcard setting is a mask for a dangerous criminal undertow. If you guys want to just hurt this, put her in a wheelchair, I'm Whoa. cool with that. A surfing dynasty accused of hacking a wicked murder for hire plot. And a hooligan turned hero. I would credit him with saving her life. So why does the woman who narrowly cheated death fear she is still a moving target? I won't let him take my baby from me. Huntington Beach is a mecca for boating and boarding, where the Taylor family reigns supreme. Their reputation is pretty strong in the city, and, and a lot of people know who they are. The patriarch John Taylor, a surfing walk of fame inductee and member of the revered sporting club known as the Hole in the Wall Gang. John was also the town's go-to surfboard maker and repairman. Sons Joe and Matt were born with sand between their toes, eagerly following in dad's wake. Standout surfers themselves. When I first met them and was around them, they were all very nice, very welcoming. This woman, who chooses to be known as Jane Doe for reasons that will soon become quite clear, married Matt 12 years ago and gave birth to their baby girl. I grew up very poor and had a bad family background and have worked since I was 14. And they betrayed themselves as an amazing family. After a life of nothing but hardship, Jane embraced the love of a seemingly good family who lived a local celebrity lifestyle on board a four-bedroom yacht in Huntington Beach. They knew every superstar in the surf world and commanded respect. But the Cinderella story would last only a short time and turn out nothing like the fairy tale. Jane complained that she lived under a ruthless patriarchy where John Taylor wielded total power over the entire family. It was like, we're adults, we have our own child. Why are we having to go by everything your dad says and everything? I can't even go to the grocery store unless, like, your dad says it's okay. And she says Matt turned from loving husband to raging monster. He would take my keys to my car, he would slash tires. He cleared my bank account out because he knew my social and everything. Prosecutors tell Crime Watch Daily Matt was arrested in 2005 for violence upon a domestic partner and child endangerment. He pled guilty to disturbing the peace. A restraining order was put in place then protecting Jane and her child. Cops also say in 2007, Joe was convicted of making criminal threats to Jane. Jane says the family was nothing like their public persona. They're just like monsters with masks on. They portray themselves as these good people, and they don't see that when the doors are closed, John's constantly screaming and yelling at his the sons. Jane's brother-in-law, Joe, had drug abuse issues and scrapes with the law. And then there was Travis Sprague, a close family friend who lived with the Taylors and had his own criminal record, including burglary and grand theft. I was never nice to him. I didn't like him around my daughter. Jane wanted out, but with no money of her own, she secretly got a job as a waitress. And I just was saving my money so that I could move out. He found out that I was working. I came into my work and actually tried ripping me out of there. And my manager actually saved me. That was the last straw for Jane Doe. When I left him, I left with two trash bags and stuff and my daughter, that was it. I left everything behind. She filed for divorce, but Matt was having none of it. He was like, that's not an option. This was war. Jane says the Taylors used the power of their deep pockets and tight connections to wear her down. We're in custody court and it's like I was struggling to put a roof over my head and they were just draining me. But Jane wouldn't give up. When they hit, she hit back with everything she had, becoming a problem for the Taylors. There was a concern that she would drag it out in court so long, then just accruing more and more legal fees, ultimately causing the family to lose money. 
Did it ever cross your mind that no matter what these people had done in the past, they could actually plan to have you murdered? Yeah, I was terrified. That's why I didn't ever, everything, every threat they made, I just stayed quiet and I just did what they said. Jane Doe isn't just fighting her ex, Matt Taylor, for custody of their child. She's fighting an entire California surfing dynasty. His dad thinks he's like the king of Huntington Beach. They think they can get away with anything and the money they have will just buy them out of anything. But the truth is, Matt's legal fees were soaking up a significant amount of his family's assets. I do believe that he did not want his ex-wife to drain the family of money. Cops say a family member was ready to stop the bleeding permanently. Enter son Joe and close family friend Travis Spray. They've both had their troubles with the law, mostly nonviolent. Authorities say that's all about to change. Joe sat him down on the couch, showed him a picture of Jane Doe, put $5,000 cash in his lap, and told Mr. Spray, that, get rid of her. Travis's job was to find a willing and able hitman. Travis took the money, he left the Taylor residence, and a few days went by where nobody knew exactly what would happen next. It turns out Travis didn't quite have the stomach to arrange Jane Doe's murder, even though she admits she always disliked him and treated him badly. This crosses his line, it crosses his moral imperative, and, uh, and he's offended by it and, and uh, does what he can to stop it. Travis's conscience guides him to the Huntington Beach Police Department. Once law enforcement became involved, they needed to come up with a plan to prevent anything bad from happening to Jane Doe. And once again, it was Travis who puts himself square in the middle of a dangerous proposition. He's here. Don't call him yet. Let's see if he calls you. In this footage obtained by Crime Watch Daily, Travis arranges a meeting between Joe and two undercover detectives armed with guns and recording devices, posing as Mexican Mafia hitmen. What are you doing? Okay, look, come back by Casey Penny in Sears, the back part by the freeway. You'll see us park uh, a black Escalade in my white car. Uh, Joe, that's my little brother. I'm Andrew Roberto. Sit in the car for a second, and you're sitting in the car, I gotta go. After brief introductions, Travis hightails it out, and the detectives begin a skillful and convincing performance. Your old lady? No, it's uh, my brother's ex. Oh, your brother's ex? Yeah. What, is she pregnant with your baby, or what? No. Uh, no. A lot of issues, man. She's tricking me busted. She's tricking my brother busted time and time again. Just a She's evil, dude. She just said that my brother took her dog and threw it. It was an accident, so... She get arrested for yeah. yeah, they arrested him for it. Do you have a picture or something? You say you have her address? One... Hey, homeboy, can you put in your uh, keep Hey, we're not gonna have any problems for your brother, right? He's not gonna be there? No. Okay. How do you want to do it? I mean, personally, I want her really bad. There are things that we as, as uh, investigators need to do carefully so as not to spook a person or uh, appear too over eager. And there was never an indication that he was spooked or may not want to deal with our undercover officers. Hey, bro, but this is for real, right? You're not around with us? I'm not care if you waste time, bro. If you guys want to just hurt this, put her in a wheelchair, I'm cool, cool with that. We need to know what you want. I don't want her around, dude. I hate this. Joe Taylor would be fine with having her murdered, but he hadn't explicitly said that yet. What do you want us to do when we do? I mean, you want anything special? A message sent? Just like a robbery gone bad. I don't take pictures, bro. So I don't know if you're into that. We need a little bit more than that. We need him to say he wants to have her killed. But detectives have to be cautious. In the investigation, you don't want them to be leading him and possibly uh, create an entrapment situation. The faux hitmen move on to the subject of money. Joe thinks they already have the five grand he originally gave to Travis. That to me is a joke, dude. I get insulted with that. I'll do it myself. But then I'm down the drain and the wrongful death suit. They chose to continue to play the role and, and actually scoffed at the offer by Joe Taylor said that wasn't nearly enough money. There's a little bit of a risk in that. Nobody knew exactly how much Joe Taylor was willing to pay or how much he could get his hands on. How much do you want, dude? How much can you do? Like 10,000. That's the most you can do. I'm tapped right now, dude. She 
let us fuck with lawyers and bail and all that. Detectives don't want to scare off Joe. They tell him to come back another day with more cash. And sure enough, when cops later trail Joe, they see him at an ATM with his dad. Cops say John withdraws $2,000. They saw Joseph's father uh, take out money and uh, give it to Joseph. Now, we don't know what was said. We don't know what Joe Taylor told his father about why he needed the money. Uh, but we do know that he got his hands on $2,000 in cash. Joseph gets $2,000 and then contacts our undercover officers and wanted to meet again. You said two? You mm -hmm. got you two. That's great, Lydia. That's cool. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Finally, Joe utters those critical words cops desperately need to hear. You want her done? Yeah. What do you mean by done, bro? I'm telling you, you don't want her in Mexico and you want her done. Do whatever you have to do. I don't want to ever see that ever again. I don't want to get on this. We don't want to get You want it dead or not? I want her dead. Okay, don't change your number. Now it's just a matter of logistics. Jane lives with her boyfriend and three children. Best time would be when she, like, drops the kids off at school. Does she have an old man? Yeah, he's got a little bit of muscle, some tats. You don't want nothing with him, right? Gets in the way, whatever, you know what I mean? Right. But We're not doing kids, bro. We don't come around with that, dude. Hey, bro, when do you want this thing done? Uh, the sooner the better, I think. Joe says he wants the hit carried out before the next custody hearing. So you want it before that? Oh, well, we can make it happen. Detectives do a little more fishing to find out how involved Joe's father, John, may be, aside from withdrawing money for Joe. Who else lives with you? My father. Does he know any about this? He has an idea. So your dad knows a little bit about it? Yeah. Not mad or anything like that, right? No. Okay. You don't know us, we don't know you, right? Alright. Don't f with us. I'll let you know when it's done, bro. In Huntington Beach, California, they're known as surf royalty. But the Taylor clan is about to get caught in a wave of criminal prosecution. We don't want to get yeah. You want it dead or not? I want it dead. Okay. Don't change your number. Cops believe some of the Taylors were in on a plan to deal with Jane Doe. Her custody battle with Matt was draining the family fortunes. You say you don't want to see her anymore? Yeah. So, I mean, you want to do her or what? Yeah. Okay. But undercover cops posing as Mexican mafia hitmen lure Joe Taylor into a trap. They do a pretty good job of looking like uh, crooks and, and uh, acting like people that would go out and kill somebody. Joe is all in. We got to watch our too, you know? You don't want her around or? You gotta be straight up with me, bro. I don't want her. Okay, so you want it done. He made it explicitly clear who the target was, where she lived. Uh, he asked the detectives, uh, or suggested, that they make it look like a, a burglary gone bad. When Joseph Taylor stepped out of the vehicle, in his mind, there was nothing else he needed to do. The next thing that was going to happen, as far as he knew, was Jane Doe being murdered. Instead of getting his revenge, Joe gets the heat. The decision was made that we were going to go ahead and, and make the arrest. Keep your hands where I can see them. Don't move. Put your hands on the seat rest. Get out of the car. Keep your hands where I can see them. There's a fine line with when to make that decision to pull the trigger on a case and make your arrest. And we felt that it was best for the case, as well as for the victim, that we act quickly. While Joe is being cuffed, cops are staked out all over the city, executing a full family takedown. Joe's father, John, and his brother, Matt. And even Travis Sprague, the friend who rolled over on the Taylors, found himself under arrest. Cops say the fact that Travis accepted five grand from Joe when the hit was initially being planned made him guilty of conspiracy, even though Travis had nothing to do with executing the murder plot. He was culpable for his actions in this investigation as well. With all four in custody, cops have one more daunting task, breaking the news to the woman who narrowly missed a date with death. How did you find out that somebody actually wanted you dead and was willing to pay for it? I was actually moving out of my deceased father's house, and a bunch of undercover police officers walked up, and they said, we need you to come with us. You're part of a crime that you don't know about, and you're in danger. I was like, what is it about? And they're like, you don't understand. Your life's in danger. 
At the police department, cops informed Jane that she was the target of a murder for hire. He flipped over a mugshot and it was Matt. And I just was like, are you kidding? And he's like, what's your relation to that man? And I was like, it's my ex-husband. He flipped over another mugshot and it was his dad. And then I just kind of lost it. I was shocked that they actually tried, but for a second, I felt like relief. Like, okay, the police have them. They're, they got caught, they tried. I thought that I was gonna have protection now and they were gonna be put away. But even though Joe pled out and will spend 23 years behind bars, charges were dropped against John and Matt Taylor for lack of evidence. We all have our suspicions and thoughts and theories about what was going on behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what I think, it's what I can prove beyond a reasonable doubt. There wasn't evidence to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. The men were free to go, a stunning blow to the woman whom they allegedly wanted dead. I was terrified. I was literally like, I didn't want to leave the police department. I was like, I'm supposed to just go and everything just goes back to normal. For Jane Doe, it means a life of debilitating fear, constantly looking over her shoulder. I wake up and instantly check if all my kids are in the house. They're alive, they're breathing. So it's just like a routine for me to wake up and check the house to see if anyone's waiting to kill me. It's worse now. They have gone away with so much stuff that I just don't even know what they're gonna try now. She needs to exercise due caution for herself, but uh, I do believe now that with the family being in the spotlight, I don't think that there's going to be any concern of anything else happening because, of course, they would be the first ones that, that law enforcement would look at should something happen to the victim. We wanted to know just what John and Matt's intentions were, so we looked for them at their surfboard repair shop. Your movements are being recorded. The Taylors clearly weren't welcoming any guests at this time. And as for Travis Sprague, the man who mustered up the nerve to rat out his closest friends, charges were also dropped. He, too, was a free man and a hero. He went ahead and went to the authorities and uh, turned it in and got the job done. So, yes, I would credit him with saving her life. As for the future, Jane Doe has no choice but to move forward. She's got children to worry about, and that's her focus, raising her kids and trying to shake off the fear. You've told me how afraid you are for your life and the life of your children, but you were brave enough to sit down and tell me this story. Why did you make that choice? They need to know that, like, I want a voice. I don't want to have them bad-mouthing me and bashing me and just doing everything they can to hurt me and abuse me just because I won't be in a relationship with him and be a family with him and destroy my daughter's life and, just, like, I'm not going to stop fighting for my daughter and my rights to her and being in her life and being her mother and making sure that she has a good future. And I can't, I won't let him take my baby from me. And that custody dispute continues. Jane Doe was awarded custody of their daughter after the plot to take her life was exposed. Matt does, however, continue to get unsupervised visits with the now 10-year-old girl. Jane Doe is now taking him back to court trying to get the right to take their daughter out of state for things like vacations.